Hello, first graders. Welcome back. This is week nine, day one. For today's lesson, all you need is your listening ears and your thinking cap. Let's warm up our ears and our brains by doing a mystery bird riddle. Hmm, now remember, a riddle is a guessing game where you listen for clues and guess what the person is referring to. This is our riddle. And the answer to our riddle will either be a pelican or a heron. But you'll have to listen closely to decide which bird is the answer to our mystery bird riddle. Put your eyes on the first word of our riddle, this. As I read, try to follow along. This bird has humongous wings with large feathers. The feathers give the bird shade so it can see into the water to find fish to eat. It uses its beak to reach deep into the water to get fish to eat. This bird has a long stabbing beak. Hmm. Let's go through that again. After each sentence, I'll stop and I'll let you try to decide if that sentence could be about both birds or only one of the birds. This bird has humongous wings with large feathers. Could that be both or just one? The feathers give the bird shade so it can see into the water to find fish to eat. It uses its beak to reach deep into the water to get fish to eat. Now this last sentence is really important. This bird has a long stabbing beak. I'll give you a moment to think about whether we're talking about the pelican or the heron. Okay, friends, whisper which one you think it is into your hand. And then when I say one, two, three, go, shout out the answer. Is it a pelican or a heron? Ready? One, two, three, go. It's a heron. Now, was there a specific sentence in our mystery bird riddle that let you know it was the heron? Mm-hmm. I found that the last sentence that says, this bird has a long stabbing beak, that sentence really told me that it was the heron. Look at the end of the heron's beak. It has a long beak and it's pointed, which means it would be perfect for stabbing down into the water, where the pelican's beak, it scoops out of the water. Those verbs really helped us out. Throughout this entire unit, we're going to be learning more about birds, just like these birds. Let's look at our next slide, which has what we are doing in unit three. Today's the first day of Unit 3. You'll notice that there are four points because we'll be doing four things throughout this unit. Our first one, we will choose a bird to research and find out how that bird's special body parts help it survive. That's right, researchers. We've been working together. But here soon, we are going to each choose our own bird to research on our own. And we will do some hard work to find out 
how that bird's special body parts help it to survive. After we choose a bird, we will draw a scientific picture of our bird. Then, we will create a riddle about your bird and its body parts, like the riddle you just listened to. Next, we will answer a new guiding question. How do different birds use their body parts to survive? That's a lot of things to do this unit. Let's review. First, we'll choose a bird. Then, we'll create a scientific picture of our bird. Next, we'll create a riddle about your bird. And last, we'll use this new information to help us answer a new guiding question. Wow, that's a lot of information. But today, we're just gonna focus on one of those things. Our learning target tells us that the one thing we're gonna focus on is I can identify criteria for writing an expert bird riddle card. Now, when we look back at all the things we're going to be doing, we can see that our riddle is the third one. So why are we starting here? Well, we're going to start here because in order for us to be able to pick the best bird and draw a picture and create a riddle, we need to have the end in mind. Our expert bird riddle card will be one of the last things that we do, but we need to know what the criteria are for writing that card. That way, as we're working towards that goal, we understand what's coming next. Now, of course, first, let's look at all of the criteria. Criteria for a good riddle. A good bird riddle, ask a question, uses complete sentences, has facts about what the bird's body parts look like. Oh, that tells me that when I'm picking my bird and I'm researching it, I'm going to need to make sure that I'm writing down lots of facts. A good bird riddle has facts about how the body parts help the bird survive. Ooh, that tells us more. We need to have facts about the body and how the body parts help the bird survive. A good bird riddle uses adjectives to describe the bird's body parts. Mm, we'll be thinking about adjectives. A good bird riddle is written neatly. A good bird riddle has correct spelling, capitalization, and punctuation. Now, these are all of the things that make a good bird riddle, which means that along the way, we need to keep all of these things in mind because we know that we're going to have to make a riddle at some point during unit three. Read the, <clears throat> excuse me, read the criteria for the good riddle as you see each arrow pop up. Ask a question. You read this one. Good. Mm hmm. Good job. Uses adjectives to describe. written neatly and our last one has correct spelling capitalization punctuation good job now that we have an understanding of what we need to do which is the criteria to write our expert bird riddle card we are ready to start at the beginning and choose our bird your teacher will give you access to the National Geographic Kids, Little Kids' first big book of birds. You'll go through this text to see if you can find your favorite bird. 
a bird that you will research and eventually you'll create an expert bird riddle card about that bird. Thank you for joining me today and digging into all the things we need to do to create our expert bird riddle card. I'll see you next time. Bye friends.